Hello lunatics, geeks, and astrological freaks, welcome to my channel. Something I don't often show people I know in real life, but uh, here we are. Please don't look at the suggested videos or any of my channel. I will regret things, I will hate myself, and I may never forgive you. Today we're going to be doing a different kind of video, probably because it's a school project, but luckily for me, also an interest of mine. In this incredibly long video, I will be looking at a particular modern day technology that uses electromagnetic waves and how. What is my technology of choice, you ask? Spectrograms! Woo! A spectrogram, sometimes called a sonograph or voice print, is something that converts recorded sound waves into electromagnetic waves in the form of visible light to provide a visual representation of said sound waves. Spectrograms use different colors to portray the properties of sound over time, such as volume, pitch, and frequency. Let's get into it. This is a spectrogram. The one you're seeing right now is, in fact, a spectrogram of this video through the program OSIN Audio, which is what I use to edit audio when I voice act. More on that later. In this video, I will show the different aspects of a spectrogram, such as its importance, creation, and scientific qualities. Welcome to school, kids. While my knowledge and use of spectrograms is limited, there is a lot, and I mean a lot, of ways people use them. But why was it made? You may or may not have turn of the old English proverb, ironically first recorded in Latin, which states that necessity is the mother of invention. And yet, this raises the question of... Is this statement true in the creation of a spectrogram? Well, the answer's complicated. Similar to Alfred North Whitehead's view on necessity that the basis of invention is science, and science is almost wholly the outgrowth of pleasurable intellectual curiosity, the purpose of a spectrogram wasn't something people completely needed, but it sure is helpful, even if the average person has never heard the word before. While spectrograms can be used for simple voice recording and editing, to more commonly known tools of the ultrasound, you know, the picture with the baby within it, with the womb, that you can see. Unless you're Ross from Friends. What? I can't see it! But you, you, you just said that you did. I know, I lied! I didn't want her to think I was a terrible mother! I can't even see my own baby! Spectrograms have many uses in the scientific analysis of data and studies. An example of this can be seen in the United States Geological Survey's monitoring of earthquakes. On their websites under the About Spectrogram section, they explain how the spectrogram will show ground movements for several seconds during earthquakes to figure out the size and sensitivity of the seismograph. The people at USGS use spectrograms to analyze earthquakes, big and small, in the California area. This is often vital for research and predictions around the world, and the spectrograms themselves are the main source for many people to examine the severity of the earthquakes. But they aren't just used to examine earthquakes. Or a baby. In an educational video about Suzaku, a satellite at NASA that uses X-ray spectroscopy, there is an activity involving spectrograms introduced as an aid for learning. In the directions, it states that spectral analysis is an important skill in all branches of science. This is an activity that has applications in chemistry, physics, astronomy, and mathematics, and can be broadly used in a curriculum and across curricula. In this case, the object under study is heavily ionized, which allows for large transitions in energy for electrons. Specific transitions are read as peaks on the spectrogram. Additionally, students will explore an authentic piece of scientific work. Oh my god, that was a long quote. Anyways, within the investigation, students had the chance to read and understand spectrograms with visual representation of x-rays instead of sound waves, which allows for easy comprehension of a complex version of electromagnetic waves using other EM waves that we can better understand. Visual light. Both these uses of spectrograms have allowed for thorough investigation of multiple forms of energy for many to understand, even if that means needing the ability to read a spectrogram. In that case, how is it read? Let's take a look at an example more close to home. As you may or may not be able to tell, this video is heavily edited. I mean, do you expect me to get all this information out of my mouth in one take? Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm actually surprised I was able to edit it in the amount of time I was given because the only way I would be able to get a medal in the Olympics is if they added a procrastination contest. Yeah, it's that bad. And yes, this is in the script. Moving on. This is Osnadio. This teal thing is called an audio signal. You've probably seen it a lot. What the hell is an audio signal, you ask? 
An audio signal is a representation of sound, typically as an electrical voltage for analog signals and a binary number for digital signals. Audio signals have frequencies in the audio frequency range of roughly 20 to 20,000 hertz. The thing under it, the one with the pretty colors, that's a spectrogram, which I'm pretty sure was already previously mentioned. A spectrogram takes multiple fragments from an audio clip and graphs them in accordance to their frequency and amplitude. Then it takes each of those components of the graphs and lays them on top of each other to show a visual representation of the sound. Think of it as showing all the data points at once, whereas the regular audio clip representation you're used to is more of a combination or a median or summary or something. Heads up, I learned this from What's in Order on this website. The logistics of a spectrogram is something extremely hard to explain, but hopefully this picture can help you out quite a bit. As you can see, a spectrogram shows a lot more information, if you're reading it right. See this right here in a clip where I'm talking extremely close to the mic? With a spectrogram, you can see strange things like the puff from your mouth when pushing air that makes a puff sound. Or a spike of color here that represents something we unscientifically call a click in the voice acting world. These clicks are often made when you open your mouth or make sounds that aren't guttural. This click can also show when something taps the mic. And then there are things like background noise or electronic whining. For voice acting, it's incredibly important to reduce background noise, and with a spectrogram, you can actually see the background noise and how loud it is. You see the slightly purple colored thing behind the regular speaking parts, or the colors that are there when you don't make a sound? Knowing this is useful to editing audio, like when you try to remove that background noise. I select parts when I'm not making any sound, allow OSIN Audio to detect those frequencies, and then have it subtract those exact frequencies from the clip, making my voice more solo and clear. Most of the time it works, but sometimes if you aren't close enough to the mic, it removes some of your voice with it because of the frequency and amplitude. And yes, youngsters, if you are wondering, this does have to do with ASMR. Your body reacts to certain measures and balances of frequencies. Alright, that's, that's enough about OSIN Audio's features. Let's get down to business. Sorry. Okay. As you may know, sound is not in the form of electromagnetic waves, but colors are, using visible light. Spectrograms use this visible light spectrum to portray density, frequency, and amplitude of the sound. It converts one sense into another so that we can better understand it. As the Pratt program explains, Darker parts of the spectrogram mean higher energy densities, whereas lighter parts mean lower energy densities. If the spectrogram has a dark area around the time of 1.2 seconds and a frequency of 4000 Hz, this means that the sound has lots of energy for those high frequencies at the time. Now let's just note that the colors of OSIN Audio are inverted, so when we're talking about the Pratt program, it's different from OSIN Audio because it turns out in OSIN Audio, the lighter parts have higher densities, and the purplish parts are lower energy densities. As always, when really getting into the science behind things, NASA does a great job. In Tour of the Electromagnetic Spectrum, Visible Light, they explain that while every part of the electromagnetic spectrum is light, there is a specific amount that only we can see. Different colors are only displayed at different colors because that's how our mind receives the wavelengths. It all depends on the nanometers it emits. From 380 nanometers to 700 nanometers, lowest being violet, highest being red, the color spectrum allows for us to comprehend the world with our eyes, and therefore the spectrogram as well. And yes, while EM waves aren't the most amazing part of spectrograms, it's something that, when you further study, is really all our visual comprehension of sound or vibrations is. In the end, while spectrograms are not the most electromagnetic technology out there, they still show how one can use electromagnetic waves to show information, change it from one sense to another. Ever since I discovered spectrograms, I can't really stop using them. It's kind of a code itself, and it makes me feel like the computer detective in the crime shows who find the secret message or background sounds that helps find the villain through the frequencies. There is so much a spectrogram can show and do that helps me and other people. Scientists, doctors, astronomers, detectives, baby people, and anyone who deals with vibrations that are recorded. Um, I know that not a lot of people know about spectrograms, but hopefully you can share it. Alrighty, here are all the sources I used in this video. I know there's a lot, they're all MLA cited. I can't exactly tell you where in the video I reference them because that's difficult, but there are some times where I will explain that. So I hope you enjoyed and I'm so sorry this video was long. I will see you later. Bye. Of x-rays instead of sound waves. 
Different colors are only displayed as different colors because that's how our mind receives the wavelengths. The wavelengths? The wavelengths. And yes, while EM waves aren't... I just spit at the mic. One more time.